If you've been following along with this channel for a while now, you will know that I am a big fan of my bed sensor because it opens the door for many new smart home automations. And I've even made a video way back in the day showing you how to make one for yourself using cheap load cells, which essentially turns your bed into a giant set of scales so that it can detect if one, two, or maybe even more people are on it. Hey, this is a judgment free zone. But as some of you have commented, that solution isn't accessible for some of you because of a lack of equipment like a soldering iron or 3D printer or because you can't physically fit load cells underneath your bed. So is there another way? Thank you to SwitchBot for sponsoring this video. I was a big fan of the original SwitchBot curtain and now they've upgraded to the SwitchBot Curtain Rod 2 and we actually use this in our smart home every single day to close our curtains as part of our nighttime routine. The new model features a new flexible suspension system making it even easier to install than before with even more compatibility. They can be set up in literally minutes, super simple to use and the battery life is absolutely incredible on these even without using the solar panel. They work with Home Assistant, Alexa, Google Assistant and many others, or you can download their app and control them on the go with the optional hub. The touch and go feature means that you can also just give them a little pull and the switch bots will instantly kick in and do the rest of the work for you. Check them out with the link in the video description. Since my original solution measures weight by putting load cells underneath the legs of the bed, I knew that I wasn't going to be able to do that here. So my first idea was instead of measuring weight, could we measure pressure instead? I've seen these sensors before called force sensitive resistors or FSR for short. These sensors can measure physical pressure, squeezing or even weight to a certain degree. And FSRs are basically a resistor that changes its value as pressure is applied. So the more pressure you have, the more the resistance goes down, which can then be measured and converted into a value which we can then use. They are pretty cool, but simple sensors. And one of the best things about them is how thin they are, making it so that I could just slide the FSR in under the mattress and you won't even be able to feel it. After a little searching, I found this sensor from FlexiForce. And after looking at the data sheet, found that it could measure a huge range of pressures from zero to 25 pounds, all the way up to 7,000 pounds, which seems a little insane for such a small sensor, but with such a wide range, this should work perfectly for my needs. Once the sensor arrived, I hooked it up to an ESP8266 and loaded a simple ESP home sketch onto it. What this does is read the voltage of an analog pin. So the less pressure we apply, the more resistance there is and therefore the less voltage and vice versa. The more pressure we apply, the less resistance and therefore the more voltage we measure. I also added a potentiometer to the circuit too which allows me to control the sensitivity of the pressure applied. After rigging up a quick test and placing the sensor directly underneath the mattress on the slats of the bed frame, it quickly became apparent that this solution wasn't going to work. With lower sensitivities, getting on the bed wouldn't even register a change on the pressure sensor. And then with the higher sensitivities, there was far too much variance to be able to definitely say for sure if someone was there or not. I think this is due to the way that the mattress distributes the load across the slats when lying on it because this wasn't an issue when squeezing the pressure sensor between my fingers. I also have these slats which move as you put pressure on them which helps to distribute the load even more so it was back to the drawing board for me. I then thought about something even simpler than an FSR. Have you ever seen those pressure mats that they use in care homes to check if someone has had a fall or maybe you've seen them used under doormats as part of an alarm system. These work in a similar way to a switch. When pressure is applied, the circuit completes and turns on and when pressure is removed, the circuit breaks and turns off. There is no fancy features like measuring the pressure to figure out the weight or force applied, just a simple on or off switch. The one I bought was a relatively smaller pad that has a 25 kilo force required to activate. I hoped this would be okay under the mattress and I wouldn't run into the same problem as I did with the FSR where there wasn't enough direct pressure on the pad to trigger it. 
Although this one does have four wires coming out of it, there are only two wires required to actually make it work, making this really easy to work with. You can easily figure out which wires are the two ones that you need by using a multimeter, switching it to the beep setting and then applying some pressure. And you should see a change register on the meter as well as a beep coming out. Once I figured out which wires were the ones that I needed, I extended them by making them a bit longer so that the ESP could just sit on the floor underneath the bed and then the wires would run up to the pad which would be underneath the mattress. I soldered my wires but you can simply crimp them instead if you don't want to solder or you don't have a soldering iron. On the end I have attached some DuPont wires so that they can be easily removed or plugged in to the ESP. For our ESP, I'm using a Wemos D1 Mini, but you can use any ESP8266 or ESP32 board that you want, since there are no special requirements since this, semper, sim, since, since this sensor is so simple. All we need to do is connect one of the wires to ground and one of the wires to a GPIO pin. In this case, let's use pin D2. All we need to do is create a quick and simple ESP home config, which will read the state of our GPIO pin. This pressure sensor is what's called normally open. So when there is no pressure on the pad, the circuit is open and the switch is off. Time for the moment of truth. Now I should explain that while many people would put this pad on top of their mattress when they use them, that would suck and I for one would definitely be able to notice it. So my main criteria was that this had to go under the bed and be completely undetectable. So with the pad lying across the bed slats on my side of the bed, I lay down and it worked. I could see the state of the sensor turning on as I lay down and immediately switching off again when I got up. I tried this sensor out on the first night just to see how it worked over a long duration of time. And you can see from the graph that the majority of time it was very much on, but there is a lot of little micro jitters where I move around. The problem with this sensor is that it's almost too quick to actually react since the value will literally change immediately as pressure is applied or removed. This is really easy to fix though by using a filter value in ESP Home which can add a delay to the sensor turning off. Realistically, you don't need an incredibly fast response time for a sensor like this. So even adding a 20 or 30 second delay to the off time should be totally acceptable. Of course, depending on your setup, you may not experience this rapidly changing value even when moving around, but if you do, that is how you can fix it. With that change, you can see how much of a difference that makes overnight and really stabilizes the value and makes it much more reliable. And that is really it. You can now use this sensor to create automations in your house. For example, turn the entire house off at nighttime and set the alarm when you go to sleep and then disable it again when you get up. I'm sure you're wondering how does this compare to the original bed sensor method of using the load cells and measuring weight. Given the choice, I would still go for the load cell method first because obviously you're going to need two of these sensors, one for each side of your bed in order to accurately detect one or two people in bed, whereas the load cell can work that out using weight. And secondly, the load cell for me is a little bit more reliable in terms of floating values since it's literally measuring how much weight is there. But the one advantage that the pressure mat has over the load cell is that you can use it in many different places other than just bed detection. So you could put this under the cushions and your sofa to detect if people are watching TV or maybe chairs in your office, or you could do something wild like have this under a doormat so that when your dog steps on it, it opens some sort of motorized door and lets them back in again. Whatever it is, this is quite a versatile sensor that could be used in different places. But then again, so could the load cell be used in different places too. I'm sure you're wondering why you would need something like a pressure sensor or a load cell sensor for bed detection, as opposed to using something like a motion sensor or a millimeter wave presence detection like we've done in previous videos. Well, the difference between these two is that the load cell and the pressure mat can detect one or two or maybe more than two people in the bed, 
whereas a millimeter wave, at least the current ones we have, can only detect one or the presence of someone in the room. It doesn't know how many people. And also, the pressure mat and the bed sensor have a pretty good estimation if you're actually sleeping or if you're actually in bed, whereas the presence and the millimeter wave sensors, they just know that you're in the room, not what you're actually doing. But anyways, at least for those of you who are unable to make the original version, this is a really nice alternative that now enables you to have this sort of setup and start doing some more advanced presence detection in your smart home. Drop me a comment down below actually, and let me know if you're planning on using this sensor and where you plan on putting it. I'm actually really interested to see what sort of unique ideas you guys come up with. Make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed, and I will see you in the next video.